Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here. So, if you've been following along with this series of videos, The Crow in the Shadow of Eric Draven, we've already discussed the retelling of the Eric Draven story through the Image Comics published story arc. Then we took a look at the current proposed remake and why I felt it most likely won't come to fruition. Now, that brings us to Reboot the Remake in which I will be discussing my thoughts on how a reboot of the Crow franchise might best be handled, and I will be breaking it down into two separate videos. In this first, Part A, we will be discussing if you absolutely feel that you must retell the Eric Draven story, then here are some ideas I don't think have been considered that may work out for everyone. And then the following, Part B, will be my pitch for a non-Eric Draven related reboot of the franchise. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So, the number one biggest thing that is going to make this version of the film stand out and be unique is... Do it in animation. No matter what you do as a film, you will be compared to the original. So, whatever style you decide to choose, it will either be too much or too little like the Brandon Lee film. The only real option would be to go black and white, however, if you do that in live action, you will be critiqued as ripping off Sin City. Animation automatically solves this problem, as well as gives you a format which allows for much more license from the audience in terms of exploration of artistic style. In theory, you could still go black and white with it, but doing it in animation gives you a lot more options to play with in terms of expression. It also aids in the problems that will arise from casting, which we'll take a closer look at here in just a little bit. But no matter what you do in live action form, the lead will be compared to Brandon Lee. By doing this in animation, you completely remove that from the equation, and at the same time, you are able to base the character design on an amalgamation of both the comic book and Brandon Lee's physical attributes. James, R uh, James Obar has done some beautiful artwork of the character with Brandon Lee's face and physique that matches more closely and gives you a kind of an idea of the visual style that you might be looking at through something like this. Which brings me to my next point. Get James Obar involved. Get him to design all the character models. His specific stylized character models inform the world that you'll be creating, and because it's anchored in the creator of the original source material's creative well, it will feel more connected on an emotional level to what fans know while also giving you the street cred you need to get people behind this particular version of the film. So, next, the concept of blending the original graphic novel and the original movie makes sense. Both are beloved, and it is easy to see where a middle ground could be found. However, having said that, I would suggest dropping the real estate scam angle from the live-action movie, as well as adopting the non-linear narrative structure of the original graphic novel. Though it would take some tweaking, it would be easy to look at films that have come out since the original graphic novel that have done this well and apply a similar non-linear logic, specifically Memento and the early Tarantino films. And I would also suggest not just drawing from the original film and original graphic novel. While the whole point of this video series has been uh, addressing the problems of retelling the Eric Draven story, almost every iteration of his story has had at least some elements of value. It would be very easy to incorporate some of these uh, great moments and elements from lesser works involving the character into this, helping solidify this as the new foundation for the mythology. And speaking of doing a hybridization of the best parts of the source materials, I suggest doing it as a pseudo-period piece. While the themes and story of The Crow are timeless, the aesthetics and style are very much indicative of a very specific period. So, set it in an amalgamation of the late 80s and early 90s. This way you can play into all the original aesthetics while tweaking certain elements for maximum effectiveness. Build your soundtrack out of the same concept. Go back to the original source material. Now, a lot of these songs Obar used as inspiration in the original graphic novel would most likely be much more affordable. By mixing some of those in with some of the more iconic tracks from the original film soundtrack, you will help solidify the obscure time capsule effect. The proper balance of this soundtrack, I think, is one of the final pieces in the hybridization of the original source material and the Brandon Lee film. The score itself would also have to be very important, and while I would think a traditional score would go very well with some of the intensely graphic and beautiful images, I would say that really what you should probably do is lean more towards 
someone like the Dust Brothers or maybe even Marilyn Manson who could help blend all these elements into something that gives you that time capsule feel but still elicits a contemporary feeling as well. And finally, the voice casting is direly important. You're going to be doing this in animation, and because of the nature and tone of the piece, you're going to want to go for established, recognizable names within the voice talent community. This again will give the film a certain air of legitimacy in the world of animation. If it were me, my casting would go a little something like this. And as always, guys, please forgive me with the pronunciation on some of these names. So for the role of Eric, I would like to see Steve Blum. Uh, for Shelley, Wendy Lee. For Sarah Gray Delisley. Uh, for The Crow, D. Bradley Baker. Both for the animal himself, as well as the conversational voice, which you could do with, like, echoes and whispers and kind of a bit of distortion and stuff like that. For The Skeleton Cowboy, you got to go Tony Todd all the way. For Detective Albrecht, I'd love to see Kevin Conroy in that role. And then for the big bad of the piece, again, if you're doing something more like the comic where Top Dollar is really the big bad, or I'm sorry, T-Bird's really the big bad, and Top Dollar is kind of just a drug dealer who gets killed along the way who is an awesome, badass character, then for those two big bads, I'd have to say for Top Dollar, Ron Perlman. And then for T-Bird... Frickin' Keith David all the way. He's awesome in everything and gives so much power and weight to every performance that he does. Now, for the other members of the gang, you're also going to want just strong, hardcore talent on this. But I don't have any specific casting in mind, so I just thought I would throw out, like, my dream team. So, obviously, you'd have Mark Hamill, Kevin Michael Richardson, John DiMaggio, Troy Baker, Phil Lamar, Dante Bosco. And, hell, just for good measure, why don't you throw in Tara Strong, Jennifer Hale and Kathleen Zulch, because there's plenty of room in this bloodbath for some ass-kicking bad girl thugs, you know what I'm saying? Now, in terms of a director or a specific animation studio, I actually have no predetermined preference. Based on the scenario I've presented, there are still so many different versions of that which could be done, so I would really be more interested in presenting my proposal and then seeing what directors and animation studios would have to add to it. However, I do think that this film would work best as a 2D animated style. Obviously, some of the backgrounds and vehicles and other elements would be CGI, possibly 3D, but I kind of feel like a classical 2D animation would be more uh, like evocative of the source material, as well as help that very specific time capsule feeling that I think the film should be striving for. Right on, guys. So, yeah. If I were going to remake The Crow, specifically the story of Eric Draven, that is how I would go about it. But those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think? Would you like to see this version of the film? Do you think The Crow would, would work better in animation than it would in live action? Or do you think that despite being in animation, this version of the film would still have all the same issues any other film based on the Eric Draven character would come and, you know, would have? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with some friends as that's more important now than ever with all the things that YouTube has been changing up on us. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure and hit the subscribe as well as that little bell so you can get notifications on all the dope content I'll have coming out in the future. As always guys, thank you so much for your time, I hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.